Welcome to the tutorial about the LGPL, the GNU Lesser General Public License version 3. This is a license specifically made for software libraries. And to understand uh, how the license is structured, it's important um, to know the GPL, which is the basic license of the Free Software Foundation for software with the so-called copyleft. The copyleft is an idea, a concept to ensure freedom of developers in a way that you have to license all modifications of the software under the same license conditions. The LGPL has an exception to that basic concept that means the copyleft is not a strong one covering all modifications but only a specific modifications that are modifications within the library. So uh, in a combination of an application with the library, the library and its modifications have to be licensed under the LGPL, whereas the application might be under different license obligations, being free software licenses or a proprietary license. The LGPL provides a very broad grant of rights as uh, every free software license do or a, every open source license. That means you can copy, distribute and modify the software for any purpose. You can use it in embedded systems and for general applications. Though how works the copyleft of the LGPL, a so-called weak copyleft? And it's quite easy because a license distinguishes uh, the application, that means the work that uses the library, and the library itself. So any modifications within the library, so adding new files or modifying existing files, means that you have to license uh, these modifications under the LGPL. Your application might be under different license conditions, proprietary or free software license conditions. The LGPL contains a protection against so-called typoization. So what is typoization? Taiwanization is um, a, a technical protection that prevents users from reinstalling modified versions of the software on a certain device. The FSF wants to avoid um, Taiwanization to protect the freedom of the developer uh, to modify the library and reinstall modified libraries. So this is particularly true in the case that you have, for example, um, a digital signature that is required to um, reinstall new software. And uh, the LGPL has a specific um, clause that says, well, if you use such a protection, digital rights protection system, then you have to provide the so-called installation information. That means you have to provide the user with the necessary information to enable him to reinstall the software on the device. So this is restricted to consumer products and in the world of B2B products or products used for governmental use uh, this obligation to provide installation information does not exist. So what is a consumer product? That's basically uh, a product that is used in a household for private use. So uh, for example, uh, private cars um, and all possible devices in the household.
As any free software license that the LGBL contains license obligations you have to fulfill, that means information to be provided for your customer. This is providing the license text of the GPL and the LGPL together. You have to provide a disclaimer of warranty and of course the complete corresponding source code of the library. Furthermore, you need to, uh, to indicate that the LGBL library is used in your product and if you display uh, license information, you have add the information that the LGBL library or more LGBL libraries are used in this product. Furthermore, you have to provide um, the copyright notices um, of the LGPL software. Yeah, mostly it's necessary that you use code from header files in your application. So code from the library uh, in your header files to have definitions, for example. So what, how to deal with that? The LGBL says, well, as long as you have less than 10 lines of code or that's just definitions, so there is an exception, no problem for that. You can do that. If you have inline code that um, contains more than 10 lines of, of code, then you would have to license your application under the LGPL because uh, then you use really a amount of code that makes it a derivative work and uh, the exception does not apply. What else is important? So the LGPL has the intention that the customer should be able to relink a new version of the library with the application. Though, how to do that? Um, the license provides very clear and detailed information how to do that. And it's uh, depending from the question if in your product you have a static linking or dynamic linking. So if the library is dynamically linked, it's enough to have a shared library mechanism that works with this new version of the library as long as it is, uh, has the same interface. Of course, if you modify the library completely, then it might not work. But if you use the same interface, this shared library mechanism should work. If you use it uh, in a way that is static linking, um, then you have to provide a binary file of your application or the source code if you want to do so, so that um, the customer can use uh, this binary file, the new library and relink it link it to one executable. So you find more detailed information in the license, but that the basic idea, um, yeah, to the main goal, to allow people to modify the library. That's always, and again, uh, the main goal of the license. Both licenses are similar in spirit. The LGPL3 is based on the GPL3, so most of the text is uh, identical, but it's more some exceptions are added. And if you look in, into the LGPL version 2.1, uh, what is different is uh, firstly, um, the FSF skipped the obligation uh, to allow the modification of the work that uses the library that means the application, uh, it seemed that there was no practical use of, of this right for developers. Furthermore, uh, we have new wording about uh, patterns and DRM, for example, the installation information. And that's interesting because in the LGPL version 2.1, we have no explicit wording on that. What does not mean that you have not to provide installation information. So from the spirit of the license, in, in my opinion, uh, that means you should 
enable the customer um, to relink the software and use that new combination of application and library uh, implicitly means that uh, you have to enable the customer to reinstall it and that means you need to have to provide the installation information um, in the case that you use a digital signature or something else. But that is my personal interpretation of the LGPL um, under European law. So with patents, the situation is similar as with installation information. There is less information and explicit requirement in the LGPL version 2.1 compared to LGPL version 3. Um, but uh, the idea is more or less the same. So what does uh, the LGPL version 3 um, say about patents? On the one hand, what is about your own patents? Um, the idea is uh, firstly that if you distribute a product containing the LGBL library, then you have to allow the use of your patents in this software. So that is uh, one requirement. Another requirement is um, all the other people that use this LGBL library shall have the same rights. The Free Software Foundation wants to avoid that there are two groups of persons. One group that has more rights with regard to a certain LGBL software and another group um, that has uh, not all the rights and uh, is restricted uh, because of a patent. And uh, the patent clause is, uh, has the intention to make clear that Either you have a patent and you do not allow it, then you cannot use it with the LGPL library, or you want to allow the people to use it, then you have to make it uh, free and available to all the people that want to use it. Another aspect is how to deal with third-party patents. So if you are not able to provide a license of this third-party patent that allows to use that patent for any user of the LGBL library, then you are not able to use uh, the software because then this patent restricts the use and you cannot use it at all. So what about using LGPL version 3 libraries with other free and open source software? That's mostly no problem because uh, the LGPL version, version 3 uh, does not make any requirements um, to uh, applications to which the library is linked with that um, is problematic if you use a non-copyleft uh, free software then you can link it and but you have to fulfill the license obligation of both the LGPL and uh, the other free software license um, of software they use in this combination. Um, it's a little bit specific with the GPL because the GPL requires that you have to license the whole combination under the GPL and for this purpose the LGPL uh, allows uh, to use the code under the GPL as a kind of a dual licensing. To come to a conclusion the LGPL version 3 allows you to use uh, a library under both a proprietary and a free software application um, but uh, you should have in mind that you need to comply with all the license obligations. This is uh, part of uh, the game and the rules of these games that uh, you make sure that the freedom of the library um, is protected and people are able to modify uh, such libraries and to relink it uh, with the application that you provide in your product.